Hi, this is Steve Hargadon, and we're in day three of the Global Education Conference. What a fast and furious set of events. So much fun. Uh, this is Emmanuel Von Lee. He's, he, he's our keynote at this hour, The Power of Film in the Classroom. Welcome, Emmanuel. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Steve. Thanks for having me. He is coming in by telephone. And so uh, he's not able to see what's on the screen. I'll have to pass him any notes from the chat. Um, we're also going to show a video in the web tour, which should be a lot of fun. Thanks to our sponsors and supporters this year, a terrific outpouring of support. We just are so appreciative of it. Really grateful for all of these organizations playing a part in the conference. This is a chance for those of you in the room to let us know where you're participating from. You've seen this drill before. If you've been in any other sessions, look for the star to the left of the map. Click on it twice, then click on the map. Feel free to shout out in the chat as well where you're participating from, any information. I know we've got Thailand there, several in the US. So, Emmanuel, I'm going to turn the time over to you, and when you're ready, you tell me, and I'll start that video. Great. Thank you, Steve, and greetings, everyone. Um, I am coming to you from, from southern Utah, where I'm out at a film festival promoting our latest film, so that's why I wasn't able to be online, and I'm reaching you via phone. Um, so before uh, we show... Uh, uh, actually, a selection of scenes from our new feature film, Elemental. I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about uh, the Global Oneness Project and, and myself as well, and, and our story, uh, and how we got involved in film. My background is actually in music. I was a jazz musician and composer. And back in 2005, my life took a, a, a turn, unexpected turn, when uh, someone offered me the opportunity to work on a documentary film. And although I had no experience working in documentary film, I was intrigued by the idea and decided to give it a go. And I was immediately fascinated by the power of film to provoke new ideas for discussion and how documentary film in particular could be a powerful tool in raising awareness about some of the most pressing issues of our time. And I was also fascinated by the power of new ways to share these through these films through emerging distribution platforms and how the internet could be a way to share films to a global audience and challenge the traditional distribution um, mediums that have been out there. And this was back before the internet you know, has become what it is today as a, as a platform for sharing films. There was no YouTube. There were no iPhones. There was no iTunes. It was a very different web. Um, but I could see that it was only going to be a matter of time before a video on the web would take off and that it would be big and then it would transform everything. And so I had this idea. Travel the world, gathering stories that could inspire people to rethink their relationship to the world, and share these films on an online platform for free. The hope was that people would see films that would make them question the status quo, and share how people from all over the world are confronting challenges and creating positive change. And the, the people watching these films wouldn't just be passive observers, but would become engaged in discussion about the issues and ideas presented, and that this discussion could lead to action, and in some small way contribute to real, meaningful change in local and global communities. And for the past seven years, that's what I've been doing. Um, the web did turn out to be the next big thing for video, as we all know and in turn revealed a global audience of people who were interested in this type of material. The online platform and organization we created, the Global Oneness Project, has produced films uh, that share stories covering a range of topics, but stories that uh, you know, ideally get people to, to think about what is possible and that within the you know, doom and gloom um, that we hear about so much in the news, there are in fact pockets of hope. Um, stories about a grandmother bringing peace to youth gangs in the barrios of Ecuador. 
about sustainable food systems under threat in East Africa, or innovative recycling clothing initiatives in India. And that although these stories might be global, the themes and ideas that, that they represent could make an impact in, right here in America or anywhere, um, and offer people a glimpse into the amazing things that are happening around the world. We also became engaged in sharing these content, this content in educational settings and encouraging teachers and students to use the films as a starting point for discussion and engagement in classroom settings. And in the past few years have shipped tens of thousands of DVDs all over the world where they have been shown in classrooms or community settings, um, businesses, organizational settings, as well as you know, through television and the more traditional me mediums of distribution. But it's in these classrooms that the ideas have really taken off with students and teachers taking what might be something happening around the world and applying it right to their, in their own classroom. Uh, we're going to show a series of scenes from a new film uh, called Elemental um, that's currently in the film festival circuit and will be broadly released next year, including uh, an in-depth educational component. Um, the film follows three people in India, Australia, and Canada as they work to overcome monumental ecological challenges and the human struggles they go through in their own lives during this process. The hope was to tell a very human story about our relationship to nature and the challenges and opportunities for change we have during our current ecological crisis. So you're going to see a trailer for the film followed by three scenes, each one from one of the characters and one of the stories. Um, and afterwards, um, we can uh, chat about them and, and discuss, uh, discuss this work. I look forward to it. Absolutely. So the way this works is there is a password when we take you to the site. And the password is elemental. So I'm going to take you to the video now, and you'll probably have to put that password in. Do let me know when that video starts showing up for you. And you'll likely have to click play as well.
So I've moved this back to the regular slide deck. I don't know if anybody else had this experience, but my poor hotel's Wi-Fi could not keep up with the bandwidth. So I only got about halfway through. We'll let others indicate in the chat how they did. But uh, we did get a note from Adrian that the video will be up until Friday with that password. And the half of the film I saw was gorgeous. Peggy saying, wow, what a powerful video. So Emmanuel, how would you like to handle this? Would you like people to ask you questions? Is there more you'd like to say? Um, uh, I think questions would be great. Let me just um, maybe say a couple words which I think might be applicable to some of the people listening, uh, many of whom I assume are teachers or involved in education, is that um, the film uh, is going to be released next year um, theatrically as well as other you know, television, broad digital release. But before that, it will be available for educators. That's going to be the first way it's available to the public in the spring, um, both through the educational distribution uh, or company Collective Eye and also directly through elementalthefilm.com. So if you go to elementalthefilm.com, and you sign up um, for our newsletter or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. All the information is right there, elementalthefilm.com. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash elementalfilm. And our Twitter handle is elementalfilm. And then you can, if you're interested, you can you know, stay abreast and we'll notify uh, everyone when the educational version of the film is available. It will be accompanied by an in-depth curriculum being developed by the Center of Eco-Literacy, which is a wonderful educational group which produces educational curricula um, that meet national criteria and standards in the U.S. Um, they've done uh, wonderful curriculums for films like Food, Inc. Um, and others, uh, and it will include also a collection of conversation cards uh, in, you know, designed to engage students around the themes and ideas raised in the film in a quick and easy way. And those will be available both as a free digital download, those materials, and also as a printed edition kit. So that will all be available um, in the new year uh, in March. And so stay abreast for that, and then you guys can hopefully utilize the film if it's of interest for you in your educational settings. So you're welcome to raise your you're welcome to raise your hand. Sorry here. Hello. 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 So you're welcome to raise your hand and we'll give you the microphone and you can ask a question. Or you can uh, if you have a question in the chat, Peggy Gray is saying she's not, or Peggy George is saying she's not hearing you. When you do show um, an audio lag, Peggy, I think you're going to catch up in a minute. So feel free to put a question in the chat or raise your hand and we'll give you the microphone. I'm curious, uh, with regard to your music background, how did that translate into some of the talents or gifts that you have related to filmmaking? Um, gosh, uh, directly with Elemental, it applied that I, I, I wrote the score, I co-wrote the score with a colleague, a friend of mine, um, uh, which, which you guys heard some of in the, the, the scenes which you just watched. Um, so my background in composition and uh, comes in handy um, when writing music for a film, and, and music is a big part of film. Um, and in Elemental, it was a big part um, as we wanted to use film, the music to help tie the stories together. We have three different stories on three continents, and we wanted to use the music and the score to be a connective tissue between the stories and the elements. Um, I guess I would also say that I was I'm, I was a jazz musician first and foremost, and a lot of uh, you know time uh, playing jazz is about improvisation, and I found that that was a useful skill to have um, when working in documentary film. A lot of things happen you know on the fly. You have to react and the things that that happen that you thought would be one way, but then turn out to be another. So learning to adjust is, and improvise it was an important important skill set that applied. Um, to filmmaking. How does a project like this get funded? Um, the fil this film in particular was funded through foundations and also through private donations. Um, so we were uh, very, very uh, lucky to receive such generous funding that allowed us to tell the story um, and give it the time and production quality that we, we wanted to give it. 
Um, so many people contributed on an individual basis, and then um, some foundations at Ford and uh, larger contributors. So we have a question from the chat. Uh, what affordable cameras of comparable quality would you recommend for educators? <laughs> Well, actually, we filmed Elemental on a very, very affordable camera um, that has incredible production quality. It's called the Canon 5D. It's actually a still camera that shoots video. And we were one of the first feature films to shoot, uh, to shoot on this, this camera in this format. And the cameras themselves are $2,500 brand new, which may sound like a lot, but when you compare it to other video cameras of comparable quality, it's a really affordable deal. Um, and, it, and it gives allows you to give you a really film like cinematic look and use lenses. Um, and it's also a really easy camera for kids to use. It's small. It's easy for them to understand. It's not complicated to operate. Um, and so it's definitely a camera that, that I would recommend that or the Canon uh, 70 and other similar DSLR cameras um, which are affordable, shoot photography and video. It's a great way to get started. Uh, Jen wants to know, are the subjects of the film involved in the current update of their situation? Sorry, Jen wanted to know question? if the subjects of the film uh, are involved with current updates in their, of their situations. Um, yes, uh, we have, we have um, at the end of the film, there's actually an update. Uh, that's included um, because when we finish production and when the film has been out there, there's been a lapse of over a year. And so at the end of the film, we, we provide an update on, on both Ariel, Rajendra, and Jay. And we'll continue to update um, our audiences about you know, progress in their, in their work as we share the film. I'm wondering out. if you know, Emmanuel, or maybe anybody in the audience would know um, if, there's, if there have been any student film festivals specifically on uh, environmental change or on the environment? I don't know of any personally. I'm sure there are some out there. Um, but what I think, you know, outside of film festivals, which is a great thing, but I think there's, a, you know, a great avenue for student filmmakers, whether they're making films about environmental issues or social issues or just great stories that inspire them, is, is the Vimeo filmmaking community. Vimeo.com, which is the same place where you saw the, that these scenes were just shared, um, is a little bit different than YouTube, and it uh, doesn't usually include as much, you know, um, content which which isn't so great. Um, Vimeo has a lot of high quality content from people all over the world sharing films, and uh, people watch them and share them. So it's a great place for budding filmmakers to upload their short films and share them with uh, with other filmmakers and uh, and they and they spread quite well. So I would encourage people to to use Vimeo as a great way to to share their content and then obviously look for film festivals, but um, sometimes just you know the online world is almost a instantaneous film festival. So Adrian time. shares a link to um, a site with the Canon 5D and I'm kind of blown away. I mean this is a uh, an SLR camera, right? Yeah, no, it's a, it's it's a digital still camera, DSLR. That's what it stands for. And um, Canon didn't mean to make it into a video camera, but the quality of the image that recorded video is so good that filmmakers from every level, people in Hollywood to you know student filmmakers to documentary filmmakers like myself, started using it. It's small. It's lightweight. Easy to use. It's affordable.